With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High School. And what with the overcrowded classrooms and a rather rigorous schedule, has had uh, a pretty busy time during the past semester. But not busy enough, evidently, to suit Mr. Osgood Conklin, Madison's beloved warden, a principal. <laughs> Just recently, Mr. Conklin organized a school banking system. And who do you think was selected for the honor of handling this noble project at no increase in salary? Well, it wasn't Barney Baruch. <laughs> I've had to take care of all the records single handed. Oh, I'm not complaining. I think it's admirable for people to be saving and frugal. Especially if you've got something to frug, a safe. <laughs> but I didn't count on the complications that set in last week. It seems that after school Thursday, I had $25 of the student's money in an envelope, which I placed on the dresser in my room at Mrs. Davis's. I intended to deposit it Friday morning and had asked Mrs. Davis to wake me at the usual time. I was sleeping very heavily when she knocked on my door. Honey? Oh, Connie. Connie, are you in there? No, I'll be back in 15 minutes. <laughs> Come on now, Connie. You've got to get up. Oh, why? To go to school. I graduated from school a long time ago. <laughs> well, not such a long time ago. Before you do anything else, dear, I want you to see the surprise I've got for you here in this box. In this box? Go what? on, open it, Connie. Well, I don't understand, Mrs. Davis. It isn't my birthday or anything. Why, it's a dress. Oh, you shouldn't have done it, Mrs. Davis. Oh, sure, I should have. No, you shouldn't. Yes, I should. I bought it with practically found money. Found money? Yes, I found it on your dresser yesterday. <laughs> I knew that you'd left it for me to cover the back rent you owe. But frankly, Connie, I didn't expect it so soon and so... Mrs. Davis. Yes, Connie. You shouldn't have done it. But why not? <laughs> Don't you like the dress, Connie? Sure, I like the dress. I love the dress. But will the district attorney care for it? <laughs> what district attorney? Well, don't you see, Mrs. Davis, that wasn't my money. I was going to deposit that for the students. And today also happens to be the day Mr. Conklin inspects my bank records. That is a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, the happiest coincidence <laughs> since Frankenstein met the wolf man. <laughs> Look, I know you meant well, and I hate to hurt your feelings, but really... Oh, you won't hurt my feelings, Connie. I'm a lot like my sister Angela that way. She just refuses to harbor bad thoughts. That's very nice, Mrs. Davis, but from what you've told me about Angela, sometimes she doesn't harbor any thoughts at all. <laughs> yes, she is terribly absent-minded, poor dear. But sometimes that's for the best. What's for the best? What's for the best for who? <laughs> If you'll punch my transfer, I'd like to get off here. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Davis, I've got a big problem today. That money that paid for that dress didn't belong to me. It didn't? I've already told you, Mrs. Davis, it was part of the student savings. Oh, Connie, then you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> but I didn't do it, you did it. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Let's see that box again. Oh, you got the dress at Sherry's department store. 
Maybe they'll take it back and refund the money. You see, Connie, I thought you left the money for the back rent you owe, and so I know I you did, Mrs. Thought... Davis, and I appreciate the thought more than I can tell you. But if you'll excuse me, I've got to get ready now. Walter Denton's picking me up in a few minutes. Oh, did you have another accident with your car, Connie? Just a slight collision with a new Hudson, Mrs. Davis. What happened? Well, you know the ad they have? Hudson, the car you stepped down into? Yes. Well, this one I drove down into. <laughs> You know how to get to Sherry's department store, Walter? I've got to stop there for a minute. Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. I'll get you there in no time. Uh, by the way, how do you like the car today? The car? Oh, it looks fine, Walter. I polished all four fenders the other day. Well, I'm sure that'll improve the appearance of... What fenders? <laughs> you haven't got any fenders on the car at all. Oh, of course not. They're home in my garage. I only put them on weekends. <laughs> Weekends? Well, sure. Even people don't dress up every day in the week. I see. No sense in hitting a sloppy pedestrian with a natty car. <laughs> exactly. You know, human beings are a lot like cars if they only stop to think about it. Uh, take yourself, for instance. The way you look this morning. I know. Stanley Steamer. <laughs> yeah, I'm only trying to be helpful, Miss Brooks. You look a little worried about something. Is there anything I can do? Nothing I can think of offhand, Walter. Just keep it under your hat. You keep what under my hat? The information you're going to worm out of me by the time we get to Sherry's. Oh. <laughs> well, what is the information? It's about the school banking system. Oh, oh, that. I know that's a big pain in the neck to you, but that's nothing to get depressed about. Gosh, did you see the papers this morning? No, I didn't get a chance. Well, you ought to read the story in the bulletin. Oh, that'd cheer you up. It's all about a woman embezzler who was caught stealing $19,000 from the Federal Trust Company. <laughs> they just gave her 10 years in the clink. I feel better already. <laughs> oh, she didn't even get a chance to spend any of the dough she embezzled. I guess honesty's the best policy after all. Wish I'd taken out a policy like that. <laughs> and right in the same paper is another story that'd make you glad just to be working at school, Miss Brooks. It's about conditions in the state reformatory for women. <laughs> no good, huh? <laughs> Deplorable. Oh, they make the poor inmates mop the floors all day long. And if they haven't got any mops, which they usually don't have because they're so short of everything, why, then the women have to mop the floors with their hands. How awful. Oh, here's the store, Walter. Drive up in the back, will you? That's the quickest way to get to the basement. Basement? Certainly. That's where they keep the mops, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see now. Adjustment office. This must be it. I beg your pardon. Hey, come I... in, come in. You're my very first adjustment today. <laughs> Sit down, won't you, Miss... Uh... Brooks, Constance Brooks. How do you do, Miss Brooks? I'm Mr. Pearson. Would you like a cigarette? No, thanks. I'm in kind a of a... A cup of coffee? No, I've got to get to school pretty quickly. Good for you. There's nothing I like better than a nice, punctual pupil. <laughs> you? This interview may not be as unpleasant as I anticipated. I'm not a pupil, Mr. Pearson. I'm a teacher at Madison High. But the reason I dropped in here is to return a dress someone bought for me. Well, you know the motto of Sherry's, don't you? If you're not satisfied, we cheerfully refund your money. That's what I've heard. And that's what we do. <laughs> now then, about this dress. You don't like it. Yes, I do. I like it very much. Uh, but it doesn't fit quite properly. Well, I can't be certain about that because, frankly, I didn't it's even... the color. Try... <laughs> oh, you don't like the color. I think the color is peachy. I see. And so it clashes with your complexion. You don't understand. I just can't keep the dress. I've got to get the money back. Well, that's what we're here for. In Sherry's, your money is cheerfully refunded. <laughs> She'd stop being cheerful and start refunding. <laughs> and now then, first of all, we must have a valid basis for adjustment. It tell me, how did you find out that the material in this garment is inferior? Inferior? I didn't find the out... The sales that... lady told you, didn't she? Miss Morgan. Miss Morgan? So, you know her. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no sense trying to shield her, Miss Brooks. I knew there was a leak somewhere. We'll have a loyalty check in the morning. <laughs> Look, somebody bought me this dress with money that... 
Well, it shouldn't have been spent. Why not, Miss Brooks? Uh, don't answer that. I know. It was counterfeit money. <laughs> Young woman, I'm surprised at you. Surprised and shocked. Now, just a minute, Mr. Pearson. There was nothing wrong with the money Mrs. Davis paid for this dress. So, Mrs. Davis paid for the dress. <laughs> Miss Brooks, what are you doing with Mrs. Davis's dress under your arm? <laughs> I know, Davis. I know. You couldn't afford the dress yourself, but you needed money. So when you saw it lying there on Mrs. Davis's bed, you couldn't resist the temptation. You picked it up and brought it here for a refund. Oh, you poor misguided creature. <laughs> this guy really runs the gamut. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Pearson, Mrs. Davis is my landlady. She bought me a dress for a present in this store yesterday. Well, why didn't you say so, Miss Brooks? You see, yesterday we had our final clearance sale of ladies' dresses, and of course, in a closeout of that sort, there can never be any refund. What? But remember, anything else you buy can be returned within 60 days, and Sherry's will cheerfully <laughs> refund your money. Well, that's just dandy. And the next time you have a sale, be sure and get in touch with me. Yeah, I'll be glad to. Where can we reach you? Just drop into any post office. You'll find my number under my picture. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Ladies, what's your complexion problem? My skin's so dingy. Mine's oily. My skin's dull, coarse-looking. Doctors have proved that many complexion problems respond wonderfully to proper cleansing with palm olive soap, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care. Oily skin looks less oily. Dull, drab skin fresher and brighter. Coarse-looking skin appears finer. Even tiny blemishes, incipient blackheads disappear or improve. To win such complexion improvements, simply use palm olive soap. Nothing but palm olive, the way doctors advise. Wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day. Massage with palm olive's wonderful beauty lather for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. Look for improvements in your complexion within 14 days. For remember, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advise this way for 1,285 women with all types of skin. Young, old, dry, oily, normal, and proved it could bring lovelier complexions to two out of three. So forget all other beauty care. Use palm olive soap the way these doctors advised for a fresher, brighter complexion. For loveliness all over, use big, thrifty bath size palm olive in your tub or shower. <laughs> Well, Sherry's department store lived up to its reputation by refunding the dress and cheerfully keeping my money. <laughs> In a way, it's a good thing I had the extra dress with me, because when we got to school, I stepped out of Walter's car and right through the hem of the dress I had on. Well, knowing I had to face Mr. Conklin, I felt pretty panicky. It's bad enough to have your spirits dragging without having your hem down there, too. <laughs> but I finally hit on a pretty good scheme. Between classes, I dropped into the domestic science room to have my old dress patched up and to try and sell the new one. Excuse me, Miss Atterbury, but I wonder if you could help me out. Oh, it's Miss Brooks. Well, come in, dear. What can I do for you? Well, I tore the hem of this dress I've got on. I'd like to get it fixed up. Well, I'll do whatever I can. Some of these sewing machines are in pretty bad shape. There's one old singer here that hasn't worked for weeks. That's too bad. Maybe you could teach him to dance. <laughs> Or sew the seam by hand. <laughs> Let's see that hem now. Hmm, pretty bad rip. Take quite a while to fix it. Well, then maybe I'd better slip on this other dress till you're done. I'll just step behind this screen here and take this one off. Oh, there. You got it? Yes, I'll start stitching it up right away. Good. I'll certainly appreciate it, Miss Atterbury. Well, I've got this one on. How do you like it? Why, it's lovely, Miss Brooks. I wish I had one like it. You have, Miss Atterbury. <laughs> I've decided this dress is not my type, so you're welcome to it for $25. Only $25? That's a steal, Miss Brooks. Let's use another word, shall we? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, Miss Atterbury, I've got to get over to Mr. Conklin's office. All right, Miss Brooks, and I'll have your other dress all fixed when you come back. Then we'll try the new one on me. Of course, I weigh 186, but I hope I can get into it. <laughs> Just have the $25 ready. You'll get into it. <laughs> oh, one thing, Miss Atterbury. Yes? While I'm gone, try and lose a few pounds. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, see here, Harriet. Just because you're my daughter doesn't give you the privilege of taking time off from your study period. As principal of this school, I must... But, Daddy, it'll only take a minute. I just want your permission to withdraw $3 from my school savings account. I've just got to have a new sweater. Harriet, it distresses me to hear you talk this way. Why, do you realize that it's invariably a craving for unnecessary finery that is the basis for most of the crimes committed by women? But, Daddy... Just this morning, there was a story in the paper about a woman being held as an embezzler. And do you know what her alibi was? She needed clothes. I tell you, it's a disgrace what this civilization is coming to. Show me a well-dressed girl who has only a moderate income, and I'll show you an embezzler. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. (laughs) Oh, good morning, Miss Brooks. I see we have on a new dress. Oh, is yours new, too? (laughs) This is sort of new. It's, uh, well, yes. Hello, Harriet. Hi, Miss Brooks. Uh, Run along, Harriet. I have some important matters to discuss with Miss Brooks. All right, Daddy. We'll take my matter up later on, huh? Dismissed, girl. Yes, sir. (laughs) Now then, Miss Brooks, have you brought all the student banking records with you? Well, not exactly all of them, Mr. Conklin. Uh, Then how many? None of them. (laughs) You see, I wanted to double-check some of the items before you and I did the final recap, and, uh... What are you trying to tell me, Miss Brooks? Oh, I'm not trying to tell you anything, Mr. Conklin. The less, the better. (laughs) You see, there's one more deposit I've got to make today before the records tally. Very well, Miss Brooks. I'll wait until lunch period. Well, have a long lunch period, Mr. Conklin. It may take me quite a while. To do what, Miss Brooks? To start a pyramid club. See you later, Mr. (laughs) Conklin. you did a wonderful job on my old dress, Miss Atterbury. Now, suppose you try on this new one. All right, Miss Brooks. But I'm so much heavier than you, I hope I can get it on. Oh, you'll get it on easily. I have to smear you with butter. (laughs) Now, off with the old. And on with the new. Lift your arms. That's a good girl. Now, down over your shoulders. Fine. (laughs) Past your waist. Good. Now, past your... (laughs) There. Oh, it fits you like a glove, Miss Atterbury. Feels like I'm standing in the pinky. (laughs) Well, close the zipper along the side. The zipper? All right. Oh, it won't move. Oh, nonsense. Take a deep breath. Now hold it. Oh, there we are. When can I breathe out? (laughs) Oh, don't be a child. You look lovely in it, Miss Atterbury. Thanks, Miss Brooks. But I can't hold my breath any longer. What happened? Nothing much. The zipper just returned to at ease. (laughs) You know, that's what I like about this dress, Miss Atterbury. It brings out the real you. God, I love you. (laughs) I guess we will have to alter it a little, but if you'll just give me that $25 now, I'd like to go and make... Just a minute, Miss Brooks. I don't know if I want to buy this dress right now. Here, let me take another deep breath. The latest thing, plunging neckline. You know, the fashion experts say that necklines are going further south every year. I know. Of course, this one's on its way to Mexico City. I'm sure the dress can be made to fit you. And I'm sure it can't, Miss Brooks. We just weren't made for each other. Help me get it off, will you? All right, Miss Atterbury, but you're overlooking a great buy. After all, breathing isn't everything. (laughs) There you are. I've got an idea. Why don't you dye the dress? Dye it? What color? Flesh color. Then you wouldn't have to worry about the zipper. No, I guess not. Oh, there's the lunch period. I've got to hurry over to Mr. Boynton's laboratory. Oh, did Mr. Boynton invite you to lunch, Miss Brooks? That's why I've got to hurry. He's just going to. (laughs) Oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. I'm glad I caught you before you went to lunch. Hello, Miss Brooks. I'm not going to the cafeteria today. I brought a couple of sandwiches to eat right here. Would you like one of them? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Boynton. I don't like to take your... Oh, go ahead, Miss Brooks. They're very good. Well, thanks. They're only 30 cents (laughs) apiece. Here's 15. I'll just eat the bottom half. (laughs) You know, I really should be in Mr. Conklin's office right now with the school banking records, but frankly, I'm... Well, I'm a little shy. Well, that's one of the reasons I like you, Miss Brooks. I don't mean bashful shy. I mean come to the station house shy. (laughs) I I don't understand, Miss Brooks. Is there something wrong? Nothing serious, Mr. Boynton. Do you think you could ever love an embezzler? I never have. 
What's this all about, Miss Brooks? Oh, well, let's forget it. Let's live for today. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Here's another 15 cents. Give me the top of that sandwich. <laughs> are you sure everything's all right, Miss Brooks? Oh, let's not talk about it, Mr. Boynton. Tell me, why are you eating in the lab? Cutting down on expenses? Well, sort of. I've been a little short all month. You too? Well, I'll be solvent again this afternoon. Mr. Conklin's buying a sport jacket of mine. It's one that was sent to me for Christmas, and he just insists on my selling it to him. It says he wants to wear it to the faculty masquerade ball next month. Masquerade ball? What kind of a jacket is it? Well, it's green suede. Mr. Conklin's going as Robin Hood. Oh, he's a natural. What's he giving you for it? About $25. Gee, I'm glad I dropped in today. It's good to see you, Mr. Boynton. Thanks, Miss Brooks. What are you going to wear to the masquerade, Mr. Boynton? I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. You only think you haven't made up your mind yet. Mr. Boynton, I happen to have in this box the ideal costume for you. Oh, but Miss Brooks, I... I... Let me unwrap it for you. Hmm? Now, tell the truth, Mr. Boynton. Who always wins the grand prize at fancy dress affairs? Men who dress as women. Men who dress as women. You're so right, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> now, take your jacket off. Yeah, but I don't now want... Now, that's to... a good boy. Yeah. Just slip this dress on for size. Oh, but, Miss Brooks, I'll never be able to get into if it. If Miss Atterbury could get into it, you can get into it. <laughs> now, come on, right over your head. Just straighten it out. Yeah. There. Oh, I feel ridiculous, Miss Brooks. Why, it looks lovely on you, Mr. Boynton. And I'm going to let you have it very reasonably. Uh, but it's, it's so tight. Well, naturally it's tight now, but that's easily corrected. It'll fit you perfectly when you've got the proper foundation garment on. <laughs> foundation garment? Oh, excuse me, Walter, and I was just... Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet, Walter. Uh, we were... Who's your friend? <laughs> what a bill! <laughs> Walter, please... It's Mr. Boynton. Mr. Boynton? I'm just trying on a masquerade costume. Oh, I see. Well, the reason we were looking for you, Miss Brooks, was to tell you that Daddy wants to go over those school savings records right away. I know he does, Harriet, but I haven't been able to make a certain deposit yet. However, as soon as I sell this dress to Mr. Boynton... Oh, I'm afraid I can't buy this, Miss Brooks. It's just not my type of costume. Oh, but Mr. Boynton... Well, wait a minute, Miss Brooks. If Mr. Boynton doesn't want the dress, maybe my mother will buy it. I know she's been saving up for one. Really, Harriet? Do you think she'd like it? Why, I think so. Would you mind modeling it for me, Mr. Boynton? Modeling it? <laughs> you know, walk up and down with your hand on your hip. I had to do that once when I first joined a fraternity. No, but this is absurd. I Please, Mr. Boynton, just a few steps. Well... A pretty girl <laughs> is like a man. There you are, Miss Brooks. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Hi, Hi Mr. Conklin. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Hello, Miss Boynton. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Miss Brooks, I have been expecting... Mr. Boynton! <laughs> I was just trying it on for size, Mr. Conklin, but... I know this is a biology laboratory, but what kind of an experiment is this? <laughs> oh, it's just the masquerade, Mr. Conklin. Mr. I don't Boynton. want to hear any more about it. I presume you still haven't prepared the school uh, savings record yet? No, I haven't, Mr. Well, Conklin. I'll be tied up for the rest of the day, but bring them to my home immediately after school. And they'd better balance. Let's see now, where were we? Oh, yes. She will leave you and then come back. Now, if you'll just take this chair by the desk, Miss Brooks, we'll check these columns of figures. Oh, before you do, Mr. Conklin, there's something I'd like to explain. You see, when you add them all I'm up, I'm sure don't... I'm mentally equipped to add a column of figures, Miss Brooks. Six and eight of fourteen, oh, nine twenty-three. Excuse me, seven, Osgood. Seven, seven, uh, please, Martha. Can't you see I'm trying to do some work here? Well, I just want to talk four. to Miss Brooks for a minute. Uh, well, go ahead, but be quiet yes, about dear. it. Yes, dear. Six and eight of fourteen. Come over what here, Miss Brooks. I see you're wearing the dress, Mrs. Conklin. How do you like it? Oh, I like it fine. How much did you say it was worth? Twenty-five dollars. Oh, good. You'll never guess where I keep my money, Miss Brooks. Not in the school savings bank, I hope. <laughs> no, it's in the sugar bowl. I'll go and get it for you, Miss Brooks. Miss Brooks, come here this instant. Yes, sir. Hurry, Mrs. Conklin. Ah, now sit down, Miss Brooks. I've added these figures very carefully. Three times. And I still get the same total. I know. There's $25 missing. You knew? That's what I was trying to explain, Mr. Conklin. You see, that was the money I didn't deposit. But why not? 
Well, it was used for something else. Something else? But that was a sacred trust, Miss Brooks. How could you do such a thing? Why, that's an awful... Pardon Why, me, Osgood, but I've got to talk to you. There's $25 missing from the sugar bowl. From the sugar bowl? <laughs> Only you and I knew that money was there, Osgood. Uh, well, you see, dear, uh, my check isn't due for two weeks, and I... Uh, I want that money, Osgood. I want it now. But she see... wants the dough, Osgood, and she wants it now. <laughs> see? What? Oh, well, I mean, not just anyone can play in the sugar bowl. You've got to be invited by the Southern Conference. <laughs> of course, this year, the Rose Bowl. I'll get it. Oh, come in, Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Mrs. Conklin. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Uh, well, here's that jacket, Mr. Conklin. I must say it's a good buy for only $25. Jacket? Uh, I meant to call you about that, Boynton. I've decided against buying anything for myself. I want to surprise Mrs. Conklin with a little gift. A new dress. Surprise! <laughs> <clears throat> How much is this dress, my dear? $25. I just happen to have that amount on me. <laughs> Here you are, my dear. Thanks. Here you are, my dear. Thanks. Here you are, my dear. Thanks. <laughs> the books are now balanced. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Conklin. Let me have 50 cents of that money. Here you are, Mrs. Conklin. But, Miss Brooks, what's the 50 cents for? Get yourself a mousetrap for the sugar bowl. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream... Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after the records were straightened out Friday afternoon, Mr. Conklin gave me the money and told me to be sure and deposit it the following morning. This time, I didn't leave it on my dresser. I put the $25 in an old pair of galoshes in the hall closet. I slept until almost 10 o'clock Saturday morning and was just getting out of bed when Mrs. Davis came in. Oh, I'm so glad you're up, Connie. I thought that was the cutest thing. You thought what was the cutest thing, Mrs. Davis? How you tried to give me some advance rent by slipping it into the galoshes you borrowed last week. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't take that money and buy me another dress. Of course not, Connie. I bought you a lovely leather briefcase to keep the student savings in. <laughs> well, there's only one way out. Get me a needle and thread. A needle and thread? What are you going to do? What can I do? I'll sew some sleeves on it and sell it to Mrs. Conklin. <laughs> Tune to another Our Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palmolive shaving cream comes both ways. And whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palmolive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palmolive Brushless or Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream today. 
For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.